hi welcome to marine mumbles the channel where i talk all things marine biology whether that's going outside on adventures to find marine creatures or we are staying right here to have arty adventures just like in today's episode where we will be exploring my 2019 inktober sketchbook the sketchbook filled with 31 days of inked marine comics full of hopefully funny and also educational uh, information about our marine creatures and marine world. But before we get to that, if that content sounds like your cup of tea, then please head down and subscribe to my YouTube channel so that you're not missing out on really awesome and cool marine facts that I bring you every single Wednesday. So let's get on with the sketchbook tour. So if you guys haven't heard of Inktober before, it is a sketchbook challenge where you draw with an, an ink every day during uh, October and kind of come up with your own, um, either you do prompts or just whatever you want to do with your own kind of thing. I did Inktober in 2018 as well, so this is the second time I've done it and I did a load of comics. Um, during this, so if you want to see this sketchbook tour, then uh, the link will be in the little uh, I button uh, at the top. So I did exactly the same thing again this year and decided that I wanted to do marine comics because it's something uh, relatively quick that you can make sure you get done every day. And I enjoy the challenge of trying to come up with funny and educational comics um, to fit in. And it's very difficult, especially when I have done another year of it. So that's 60 comics in total uh, of different marine information. Try and make it entertaining for you guys. So let's get on with the 2019 tour. We started off with one of my favourite creatures. The awesome turtle this uh, was just kind of uh, an idea that if you've seen up the pixar film and there's doug the dog he gets distracted by squirrels and uh, turtles who eat jellyfish and um, would get distracted by a jellyfish scrolling past because they want to you know eat the jellyfish so i thought that would be a funny um but also uh, slightly educational way so that if you guys didn't know that turtles eat jellyfish then uh, you do now day two was completely just a silly silly idea um, watch out it's another bubble powered turbo shark dude that's a boat um, I suppose almost inspired again by kind of finding Nemo when they see the bubble jet streaming across um, from the top, I just was thinking, I wonder if fish know what that is, if they think it is some sort of predator, some sort of shark, or if they can kind of work out that it's a human made object. I imagine they can't, um, and therefore I will now forever call boats bubble powered turbo sharks. Next uh, on uh, our sketchbook is something I was super super excited about uh, when I kind of got the idea it sparked in my head it really made me laugh to myself and therefore you know I thought I would draw it uh, so sharks lose teeth and um, they lose teeth throughout their life and that means that rock oh, that washed up on beaches you can find these fossilized sharks teeth and again I have a video where I'm searching for these and drawing them uh, will be in the little eye up above and because they lose these sharks teeth throughout the rest of their lives um, almost constantly they can lose I think up to 15,000 sharks like teeth teeth during one shark's life and I thought what an awful job for our poor tooth fairy who definitely wouldn't have slept since the Silurian period which is um, a period of time uh, uh, that that was the first time that sharks ever um, that sharks teeth have been found. I'm stumbling here because I was trying to remember how many years ago that is, and I don't know. So I'll pop that up here now. 
so it's that many years ago that sharks evolved um, that we think just from knowing their teeth this um, was really quite funny um, it was just silly again so these little guys are fiddler crabs which are really really cool crabs that I think live in the tropics they kind of live in groups and they have famously one giant claw and one teeny weeny claw and because they're called fiddler crabs I thought I would get um, our, our fiddler crab to audition for fiddler on the roof and um, obviously he would be perfect for this role because he was he was made for it he was made for the part but I don't know, providing a little education out there that fiddler crabs are crabs that exist, I suppose. This one was inspired by a debate I have had quite a few times with marine biology friends or um, colleagues and things. Uh, so a great white shark, famously, is the great white shark. But um, other people will say that they should just be called white shark. Uh, I think because they're one of the only white shark in in their like family um, and therefore you don't need to say great white shark you could just say white shark and get away with it um, so if you ever say great white shark there's always a couple of people if you're in a big marine biology conversation that turn around and say actually technically it's just white shark but that you know, if they these guys hear that, they're, they're, that's really taking a knock. You know, sharks have had a lot of problems uh, in the last couple of years. So why take away the fact that they're great? Because they are great. Um, so this poor shark got upset, and um, his shark friend was trying to trying to cheer him up. Bless. This one um, was definitely on the uh, educational kind of uh hit home someone um was really good and described it on twitter and said that this comic was kind of like you gotta laugh because otherwise you would cry and it's a way of getting ocean optimism which is basically where you are very oh, you're optimistic in that we can keep taking positive steps to try and help ocean creatures and 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 you know in any way that we can come up with to help share that message is a good idea and so here we have a little two little jellyfish um one guy wants to hang out with the other guy um but uh, they've got a blind date but they've got a blind date with uh, tess the tesco carrier bag and uh she won't or she or he won't speak to um our poor jellyfish friend and so uh yeah he gets really sad and uh it's just education the fact that again back to turtles eating jellyfish um they often mistake plastic bags for jellyfish and end up eating plastic and that can kill them and so this this poor guy gets confused too our own jellyfish friends so yeah i feel so you know don't litter try and reduce your plastic so you don't put it in the ocean just for the sake of the guys that you don't want to be sending jellyfish on poor blind dates <laughs> that they're not gonna have fun it's very sad um spider-man was in the news a bit during uh, october probably inspired this spider-man themed comic um so they're out on a date we have a spider crab and just another type of crab and they want to kiss and the spider crab turns upside down and tries to have an upside down kiss and what I thought would be really funny is that uh, this crab gets annoyed because it's not the first time a spider crab has decided that they wanted to kiss upside down like in the Spider-Man films and I imagine that can be quite irritating if you're a crab on the dating scene so that's that I realise I'm probably going to say that's that quite a bit because I don't know, I just said it quite a lot. Whoops. 2019, uh, this was inspired by a practical I had in undergrad and that was a real pain in the behind because we had to analyse the muscle, like uh, m weightlifting muscle, of 
muscles the object that the object the marine creature and it has eternally led me to get the spelling confused normal i could spell them fine before just in having to write an essay on the muscles of muscles really just ruined my head internally um so here we have say you know on a beach you see in the movies people have weightlifting competitions on the beach don't know and a marine biologist rocks up with their prize collection of muscles and uh and the guys are like what what are you playing at <laughs> but yeah inspired by having to write about the muscles of muscles it was hard this one i was quite proud i came up with uh i, I literally it, i don't have that much time to come up with each of these comics so i'll just think about them during daily life you know walking around walking to uni from bored at any point at my desk in the office have a quick think and uh this kind of just popped into my head randomly and really did make me laugh so these fish down here have a few extra gill slits which are the slits that um allow fish to to take in water and and it comes out of the gill slits as it goes through the gill slits and the gills um oxygen can be taken from the water and that's how uh these fish uh, breathe and um, they are <laughs> because they have a few extra gill slits they are uh, the stars of the fish version of my fav one of my favourite TV shows the Gilmore Girls and uh, these guys are just a bit annoyed that you know why does a few extra gill slits mean that you get an completely uh, new TV show and that made me laugh this oh i love this comic i wish that this is exactly what uh happened so you've all like a royal seal um is the wax seal that you have and you stamp on a letter and if you were a king or something they'd wear the seal they either on their ring or they'd have a, a proper seal so that you knew that the letter was from the seal and that was the royal seal but in the sea Neptune or Poseidon or whatever you want to call him um, has finished he has finished his letter and he wants to seal it and he has a literal seal and he comes and he gives the seal a little kiss and then it's sealed by Swalk which is sealed with a loving kiss and uh, oh, I just think that is just the most cutest idea ever and when my brain came up with it I was I just it was so cute i know it's weird to say that about myself but i feel like sometimes these ideas don't really come from my brain i mean they do but they come from like the idea section which is locked away and every now and again it just shoots an idea out and i'm like <gasps> and i just i feel like it's come from the blue and not from my brain and um i get quite pleased when i, I can come up with something as cute as this uh massive Avril Lavigne fan growing up uh, still massive Avril Lavigne fan if I'm honest and uh, skates are these type of flatfish ray things in the sea and uh, obviously the famous Avril Lavigne song is Skater Boy and this, this ray is really really rocking it out it's really stylish um, I didn't I, I forgot to do it actually I was supposed to follow this up with a guitar fish comic the idea is this as i was drawing it i kind of thought oh this skate uh couldn't play the guitar like i didn't attach them there's no gap because i was going to write something about you know he's living his best life but he still can't play the guitar and then he was going to meet a guitar fish and they would become best friends so that is in the that will be in the works maybe that will be in inktober 2020 though i doubt uh, i'm not sure i'll be able to take part in that one but um yeah, so stay tuned at some point for the Skater Boy and Guitarfish uh, comic series. <laughs> this one, um, I'm not sure very many people got when I shared it online, but I'm a real big fan of Toy Story. And in Toy Story, there's a big debate between Woody and Buzz that uh, Buzz can't fly, he can only fool with style. And poor penguins are birds that can't fly and um and so i thought toy story 5 would be 
their trip to go find the penguins um, and they will be teaching them how to fall with style but tell them that it's flying and uh, it says shall we tell them the truth and Woody's like nah they needed this and they did they did need this I should say when it comes to drawing all of these things I draw them with uh, pen and ink and it is incredibly frustrating I'm not very good at it and uh, the reason I chose to do it in pen and ink still is because it means that I don't force myself to draw very well so all of these things aren't my best drawing in the sense of if I was going to draw with um, say, say like a fine line pen it would be much easier I could put much more details into it but then I would kind of fall into the trap of trying to make it perfect so if you're going through this sketchbook tour and think oh funny ideas but I wish it was drawn a bit better well I have to draw these every day and uh, drawing with something that I find difficult to draw with just kind of limits me to like okay what is the minimum amount of lines I <laughs> I need to use so I just thought I'd venture that um, I am a bit slightly self-conscious about how well it's all drawn but I'm really proud of the ideas that I come up with so this one is um, we're at a really exciting game of snail football because obviously um, that's going to be a really really exciting uh, game for people uh, but we've got a nudie bank in the middle and uh, which are uh, sea slugs so they don't have a shell and uh, they're just shouting we've got a streaker got to put uh, at least one comic every year with uh, a play on words the fact that nudie banks have the word nudie in because I'm an adult moving on uh, there are lots and lots of gobies as you go rock pooling around the world and in the UK and these are some UK species of goby and they're all basically gobies are like little fish that probably get to from like from like that big to like maybe about that big but not they all they all sit about this big really and it can be a bit difficult to tell them apart because they're all quite similar looking um so i just thought i'd do a play on on words uh for what their names are because there are a lot of species of goby and they all have quite cool names so this is a rock goby he is living his best rock and roll life we have a painted goby so obviously i would draw a bob ross goby because he is it's just, it's just a legend it's bob ross um we have a red mouth goby which who's putting uh, makeup on and looking in the mirror and we have a giant goby who is attacking uh, a little beanstalk man and i just thought it was a cool way to kind of say uh there's not just one species of goby if you see a little fish like this then there are differences between them though uh you won't see them in the you know uh, like this unfortunately they only dress like this when humans are not around so uh, unfortunately unless you're really good friends with them like I am you're not going to see them look like this this I really loved I wanted to put in something about barnacles because barnacles are my favorite animals and I think they're really awesome but I was kind of struggling on how to give them a bit of a bit of a twist and uh, and then I watched Ice Age because <laughs> I love Ice Age and I love um, kids films and this is I want to say Scratch I think it's Scratch the squirrel from Ice Age who always takes acorns it, it, the only, his only job in the entire film is to get an acorn and he always destroys the planet somehow by getting these acorns and a uh, type of barnacle is the acorn barnacle so uh, if he'd gone to the rocky shore then he would have uh, lost his mind because there would be literally thousands of these little guys um, so I just wanted to draw the moment he realized that there was lots of acorns on the rocky shore in the form of acorn barnacles uh, moving on to uh, the ocean's biggest liar which is of course uh, the whale shark which isn't actually uh, a whale at all uh, and and it's the ocean speaks like the only my only problem i have with finding dory is that she learns whale it's how to speak whale from something that is a shark <laughs> so this uh, she learns whale from destiny the whale shark um but she's not actually a whale 
so I kind of just want to spread the word that these guys are not whales um, and also their dad is not Leonardo DiCaprio unless he's uh, yeah it's just not so this uh, fish here is the Atlantic wolf fish and these jellyfish here if you see little jellyfish with like four almost like three quarter to a circle things looking like this um, that are light pink most of the time or white uh, it's the moon jellyfish so I just wanted to play around with that and these guys are little prankster jellyfish and they go and prank the poor wolf fish he thinks it's uh, a full moon and starts howling and uh, they think that's rather funny as do I next was kind of a thought that popped into my head um and just something to kind of I, I don't know if it's about opening up the discussion uh more um it's it's more just i suppose mentioning it i'm happy to open up a discussion about um mental health and anxiety and all, all that different things but this was kind of just a thought that popped into my head and sometimes when anxiety kind of creeps into your daily life you don't really notice how anxious you are and how much it's having an effect because there's no mass obvious uh, signs so it would be great if uh, if you're feeling anxious if you could just kind of blow up like a puffer fish and then you'd be like ah I'm anxious today <laughs> and you realize and also putting physical uh, physical things to uh, mental health might actually help people see how you feel on the inside and uh, I think we would all take better strides to look after ourselves um, a lot better if we could see um, a, a, a physical manifestation of how you feel and I just thought the puffer fish would be a perfect way uh, to do that so I thought I would I'd put that comic in there we have uh, land parrots um, and we also have uh, parrot fish so these two fish uh, get lost and um, one of them goes and asks for directions but he bumps into this poor parrotfish instead and all the parrotfish does is repeat what he says and it's not helpful whatsoever and uh, shiver my timbers, Polly wants a cracker uh, yeah this, this parrotfish needs to find a pirate friend pretty simple, pretty stupid enjoyed it So brittle stars look um, are not quite the same as starfish which are um, a lot hardier uh, and a lot more um, you know you can they can take a lot more stress whereas if you find a little brittle star which is this little circle and all of these little arms as a defense uh, mechanism um, when they are stressed they can actually lose their limbs and again that's why they're called brittle stars I suppose because they're really really brittle so you, you shouldn't I want to kind of make this comic to be like you shouldn't pick these guys up because they will just kind of almost disintegrate in your hands out of stress and uh, and lose their uh, limbs and stuff so I just wanted to put this comic in there to uh, but like guys if you see anything that looks like this uh, just leave it be and admire it from afar because you don't want this to happen poor guy now we've all had some gossip or big news uh, that we wanted to share and we go and tell someone and their reaction is just meh just not what you wanted and or you've been really angry and you just want someone to to be as angry as you are and they're just like well and you're like, oh no just hear me out but in the sea if that happens the best person to go and talk to if you want to share your shocking news um, is to go tell a whale because there is no way that their reaction won't be of the largest reaction um, because they will have a large mouth to open class comedy <laughs> This I really liked, it's super simple and super, uh, su su yeah, just super simple. Um, I was talking about uh, the giant squids and the fact that no one really ever sees them and uh, there is an amazing video on YouTube um, 
that you should go and check out if you I suppose search for giant squid footage there was a Japanese scientist that had literally for decades tried to capture these guys on film and try and see them in their uh, natural habitat because they live in the deep sea they're very elusive and we only ever find them really when they've become washed up on beaches and he finally sees uh, this giant squid take the bait on this deep sea underwater sub and just cries and it, it's just really really heartwarming um, so I just thought I would put that little thing in there um, as a way to to show you guys that yeah it's really cool and elusive <gasps> dun, dun, dun. so the new it 2 film was coming out and there was adverts for it everywhere and I wanted to combine that again with a bit of the uh, ocean optimism and and uh, and try not to uh, release plastics into the ocean and reduce our plastic uh, content and you don't want balloons to go into the sea because this dude, the clownfish, are going to get them and become Pennywise the clownfish and no one, no one wants that. <gasps> this one is my favourite! <laughs> I love love Star Wars with my whole being and um, these things here that look a bit like this are like little plants that live uh, no they're not plants at all I, I take that back I shouldn't dumb it down that much they look like plants but they're animals and um, actually I'll get a video up for you here and uh, um, and because the first time I ever ID'd them, I, I couldn't believe they, they were alive. They're basically just a see-through shell. No, they're not a see-through shell at all. Oh, you can tell I've been talking for a while. It's basically a see-through tube with these little, um, little, either you have to like count these, these little things here and you count the bumps they have at the top and if you count if they're like round like this or if they're concave or convex or if they're a mixture of the two and it means that you can't tell what species of hydroid is what until you get them under a microscope in the lab which means that if you're dressed as a stormtrooper it's the perfect opportunity to say these are not the hydroids I was looking for if you're looking for a certain species and you didn't find the one that you wanted to find and I just love this I want it on a t-shirt <gasps> oh, I wish I had my own t-shirt company just to make this t-shirt awesome I had a fun time drawing this one on my list of things that I really 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 want to see is a stalked jellyfish uh, they grow on on bits of seagrass and things like that and th they look really cute and um, well they look like this and I think they look cute in the wild that looks a bit creepy if I'm honest so don't take that for my word of it but they are called stalked jellyfish and I just a bit quick play on words Lots of fish watching him from behind, and they're all watching me, aren't they? Help. I just like the idea of this poor paranoid stalked jellyfish that won't get left alone and can't go anywhere. Aww. <gasps> Moving on to the policeman crab. Uh, I don't know why I remember this, but I always remember the Latin name of Gunplax from Boydies is um, this crab and one of the common names so in marine id you get a latin name so this one would be gonoplax from boides and that always stays the same because that's very much it's scientific which family it sits in it's evolutionary kind of key where it is but you have common names um where people call species different things uh but that the problem with with that is that in different places people will call it different things and it can get confused and therefore you should always go back to the Latin in the end to make sure that you, you, you're getting exactly right. But these guys can also be called the policeman crab because they have like a crab arms that are like four times as long as a crab arm should be. Like they're really, really long. And uh, and they're called policeman crabs because of the long arm of the law. So here we have a oldie English uh, policeman crab saying hello, hello, hello. I thought that was funny and cute and I love the fact that people have thought of that and that they call them policeman crabs. This um, 
is really really cool it is uh, a mantis shrimp um, dressed up like Dorothy from um, Wizard of Oz singing somewhere over the rainbow and these two guys are like did you see a rainbow no m me neither now you might not get what this is but uh, mantis shrimps actually are really really unbelievably cool organisms um, so humans can see red green and blue and uh, then all the other colors that we see are mixtures of red green and blue however these guys can see they think they can see between 12 to 16 colors that we can't see and don't know exist which i think is absolutely bonkers so this mantis shrimp is seeing it's 12 to 16 color rainbow which we can't see and neither can these snails and uh, they're very very confused mantis shrimps are just the most amazing creatures and oh, i just i love them so much and i think that is absolutely crazy how can you ever fathom what other colors could be and the other colors exist i totally didn't even know that either <laughs> it's crazy it's really really cool this one I caved and drew for a friend because uh, this is a freshwater species, not a marine species. Um, but I also caved because it did lead to quite a good uh, pun or things. These are big headed carp fish and these are very big headed in their personality too. Sometimes looking good, this good is such a burden. He's like, me too. But then I think about how much worse it is for everyone else. Ha ha ha. Uh, which basically just leads to the normal fish going what a load of carp and they are so big headed um was just a play on the name big headed carp uh but yeah i uh i caved because a friend asked for it so we've got one freshwater species here we have a poor fish having an identity crisis. He doesn't want to be part of the shoal anymore. He wants to go out on his own. He doesn't want to blend in. He needs to make it his own life. 30 seconds into doing so, he's loving being free as his uh, shoal swims off. But there's a reason fish shoal in the sea. It is kind of protection in group numbers. And uh, this poor lone straggler was uh, eaten off by a shark within uh, within seconds he didn't really think it through so sometimes it doesn't pay off in nature to be your own individual person and also yes that that is a shark i was tired when i drew this and couldn't be bothered well i suppose i can be bothered to make it look like a shark it's got a fin and, and i thought that was good enough <laughs> sorry ah <laughs> uh... Harry Otter and his favourite stone. So I didn't realise, but I actually drew an otter in my other Inktober sketchbook. Uh, this is my rock, and I hope you have one too. Uh, so apparently, I couldn't make uh, another 30 comics that were completely unique to the other ones because uh, I completely forgot when I drew this. I just, love, I just love this fact so much. So otters carry around with them their favourite stone that they keep in their mouth. It's probably a bit big for this otter, but anyway. And they use that to help break up food and just use in, in general life. And you can often see them um, kind of playing with their favourite rocks if they're not feeding or sleeping or doing what else they do. And uh, so we've got Harry Otter, and instead of the Philosopher's Stone, you've got his favourite stone. And I just think he's so cute. Oh. And so we come to our last page in Inktober, our really colourful and gorgeous octopus. And I just wanted to kind of end this sketchbook tour, but mainly Inktober 2019, on a really positive, colourful note that we need to, over the next year, keep fighting and keep making positive choices for increasing the diversity and equality in science i also agree that we need to do that in every aspect of our lives but i just thought since i was a scientist that i would write for science there are other barriers to certain people that there shouldn't be whether conscious or subconscious and we need to make sure that we are always consciously um making sure that the, there are no barriers to people getting into science um so science is for everyone whether that's gender sexuality disability um race 
uh, uh, yeah, and just make sure that science is an inclusive part because science is for everyone and therefore everyone should be able to be in science and uh, I can only speak from the point of view of uh, a, a woman in science um, and engineering where it just seems to be where are the women there are none of us here it's it's quite a scary um, male female divide and I just wanted to end on that with a nice colourful octopus and I chose an octopus because I thought he'd be able to hug as many people as possible <laughs> that was generally my thought pattern um, so that is the end of the sketchbook tour I really really enjoyed doing Inktober this year it was difficult I didn't manage to draw this every single day but I'm glad that I have at least the finished comic pages and if you guys want to see the pictures of all of these then follow me on my Twitter and Instagram which is at Marine Mumbles and uh, make sure that you comment below any ideas that you think you have for your you could have for your own comics or what you thought and make sure to like this video if you like the Inktober sketchbook tour this was a marine biologist's attempt at making some educational comics and I really hope you guys enjoyed it um, come back next week for another marine biology educational fun video with me so have a great week until then guys, bye!